What's happening, family? It's time to pray. And I'm looking at Philippians chapter four on today. And in particular, verse number six, we've been in a discussion out of the book of Philippians. And our goal in looking at that text is to find the keys that God's giving us to remain positive in our thinking. Remember, we declare peace and praise over poisonous thinking. And this passage gives us a number of very practical tools so that you and I can secure our thinking. At verse number six, there the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God. The past is all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Look back at verse number six and look at that first part. And that's what I want to grab a hold of right now. Be anxious for nothing or the good news. Don't worry about a thing or listen to it in the passion. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. This text helps us to appreciate two very fundamental points that will allow us to have that much more significant, both in our thinking and in our discussion with God. It, it shows us, first of all, the first promise in this text is seeing the danger of worry. Point number one, worry is an attack. I want you to see the attack of worry. When you and I engage in allowing worry to take place, any of those things that will pull your attention, that's what the word means, to, to, to stress you out, to choke you out, to cause you to doubt and to feel insecure or to be concerned, overly concerned about anything. Worry, number one, is an attack against your worship. You cannot, I cannot kiss at the feet and adore one who I doubt. Worry is an attack against your worship. Number two, worry frustrates your faith walk. When you and I worry, you know that worry and doubt cannot harmonize with faith. If I'm going to believe in God, I cannot worry at the same time. Number three, worry is an insult to God's ability. Whenever we worry and whenever we cause ourselves to be anxious or doubtful or start being overly concerned about something, we forget about the one who has the power to hold everything together. In fact, we forget what the term God means. Anytime you let, you let worry or anxiety or any of those things creep into your spirit, you've forgotten how awesome, how amazing, how, how, how powerful, how omniscient and omnipresent your God is. Worry is an insult to God's ability. Number four, though, worry is, is disregard to the promises of God. Not only do you forget who God is, you forget what his word says. You forget simple promises like just consider the birds of the air or the lilies in the field. You are more significant than all of them. And since they don't have to work and yet I provide, won't I do the same thing for you, God talking? And when we worry, we forget all of the promises of God. But then number five, worry is designed to turn your focus. By nature of the word, worry, anytime we see worry or, 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 or the notion of being pulled in a different direction, we take on the same focus turning mentality of our, our lineage through scripture. We, we end up practicing that kind of loss of focus like Peter, a loss of focus like Moses, a loss of focus like David, a loss of focus like Elijah. Can I let you in on this though? When worry grips your heart, you lose your grip on God's hand. And that's exactly what happened with Peter. He lost his grip on the hand of the one who can help him to walk on water. That's what happened with the, uh, with Moses. He lost his grip on the hand of God who helps him slay his Pharaoh or defeat his Pharaoh. That's what happens with David who lost his grip on the hand of God who allowed him to slay his Goliath. That's what happened with Elijah who lost his grip on the hands of the one who allowed him to defeat his Jezebel, to close up the heavens, to go against the, the false prophets and be a victorious individual. Listen, if the enemy can take your focus off of God and on anything in creation, he succeeds in denying God the trust he wants, but more, more significantly in denying you the help God wants to provide. So worry is an attack. That's why Paul says, don't be anxious about anything. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Well, how do I respond? The second principle in verse number six, and I'm just going to use this in two parts. We'll come back to it later. But the second principle is the answer to worry. 
You and I see the attack of worry, but I want you to see the answer to worry. Paul there in that text says, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Pray about everything. In other words, be saturated in prayer throughout your day. The passion says when you and I pursue God in prayer, we need to do so at the point of any moment of concern, any attack on your peace or any potential cause to worry. In other words, be relentless. Pray like your life depends on it. Pray like it's breathing. Pray and don't stop praying. In another place, Paul would say, pray without ceasing. Pray like your best friend or your counselor is on the line for 24-7 waiting to hear from you. Pray about everything. Answer worry with a discussion with the creator of the universe. You imagine how awesome it is that your little minuscule, small-time, insignificant problems are being negotiated by the one who made the entire universe. Universe, and that's what we have. We've got the ability to go to God in prayer. So worry is an attack against your potential of allowing God to powerfully move in your life. Let's go to God and let's ask our God who can do anything to bless us to remind to be reminded on the on taking worry away and worshiping him through prayer. Let's talk to God even right now. Father, we love you. We thank you and we honor you for being our God. We thank you for hearing us. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing us with the provision of prayer, for being able to communicate with you. We thank you, Lord God, for hearing us and for dealing with us even in our struggles. I ask, oh God, even right now that you bless us to be mindful of the fact that we ought not to allow anything to creep in and lose our focus. God, we want we want to be centered on you. We want to have an undying focus on you and your ability we want you to bless us to walk on the water of our life. We want you to bless us to slay the giants in our life. We want you to bless us to face the pharaohs in our life. We want you to bless us to be able to go against the Jezebels and shut up the heavens and do those things that you've done through scripture in order for us, Lord God, to walk in the power of what it means to see your hand move throughout our life. We love you. We thank you. We, we magnify your name because you are more than able. And Lord God, even right now, I pray that you bless your world. Bless us, Lord God, to be centered and to be positive in our resolve that you will see us through whatever season we're in. We love you. We honor you. Bless and heal. Strengthen and deliver. Give us the resolve, Lord God, to continue to keep our eyes and our hearts and our hand and our focus on you. Don't allow the enemy, Lord God, to creep in and move our heart or our hand out of yours. We honor you. We bless you. We praise you. In the name of Jesus, we ask all of this in in Jesus' name we say, amen. Listen, stay free. This text teaches you to stay free. Pay attention to the attack of worry. And when you are attacked by worry or anxiety or doubt or anything that wants to turn your focus, answer it in praise, prayer. Saturate your day in prayer. I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me. And let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you.